pause our recording. So today we're going to be talking about MailChimp. We only have about 40, 45 minutes is how long I go for. And we ask questions and, and uh, provide as much answers as possible. I'm also going to show you a bit of the back end of my MailChimp and what I have it connected to and stuff like that. All right, so a little housekeeping. I will definitely want everyone to mute so that as I chat and show you things, it's really up to you if you have your video on or off. We have a small-ish group today. Um, that is completely up to you. And it also depends on what your internet is like. Sometimes our own internet can't keep up with everyone's videos and my video and, um, and the screen sharing. But it's uh, completely up to you. We had one in December where we had almost 25 people attend. So that one was like, we might want to turn the videos off because it was lagging and not being able to keep up. But definitely the mute, but there will be opportunities for questions where you can unmute, put the questions in the chat, even as we go along, because I will check it regularly and we'll leave the last 15 minutes or so for more questions. So in the chat, as usual, if you have attended one of my webinars before, I always like to see where you're at and what you're currently using or not using. Um, if you did, you know, if, if you, have joined this to learn something specific, I want to hear. It. Um, so one of the questions is, put it in the chat, are you currently using an email marketing provider? If so, who? Is it MailChimp, Constant Contact? How often do you send one out? Are you utilizing it right now? Uh, what kind of info do you include in your email newsletter? Is it you know, industry updates or business updates, or is it specific to events? Does it have your contact info at the bottom. Does it have an unsubscribe link in there? Just want to get a, a feel of if you're currently using it or not, and what um, what you're putting it in and how you're utilizing it. This lets me see where people are at that are attending it. And if you're not using one, you can say, "Hey, I'm not using one." <laughs> and if you did join this today to learn something specific or you have a specific question, please throw it in there. That way I can make sure that we cover it. My goal with my free webinars is that you've learned something. You're able to take away something. Even if it's just one thing, that's better than nothing. To me, if you've learned something, then that makes me feel like, hey, that free webinar was a success. So I'm just going to, I've got my chat open here just to take a look at what everyone's put in. So someone says they sometimes use MailChimp. They want to learn more. Uh, they try to do a newsletter once a month. They got the contact info. They've unsubscribed uh, area. Someone's new to all this, which is great. That's the whole purpose. Where to start. And someone's on Entreport with um, for their current one. And just curious to learn more about MailChimp. That's great. So keep putting them in there. I'll pull that up in a little bit again. And at any point you have questions, throw them in there. That way you don't forget because I will pull them up throughout. And then also at the end, definitely dive in some more. All right. So for those who haven't met me yet, uh, I like to always introduce myself. And for those who hear this every single time, I'm sorry. <laughs> So my name is Samantha Gernhart. I am located in Brantford, Ontario. We moved from British Columbia to Ontario actually two years to the day. I went in my Facebook memories and it showed me on the plane with my kids and the cat. <laughs> and we were coming from BC to Ontario. So two years to the date, we moved into our house. Uh, like March 12th was our first night. So what days later is when the province had shut down. So we moved just before the pandemic. Yeah, it was not fun. So I've been in uh, Brantford, Ontario for two years, right to the day. I've had my own business for over 16 years. This coming summer will be my 17th year in business. Gosh, the, the thought of that when I say that. I had it before the husband, before the kids, before a lot of things. So when I describe to someone what I do, I talk about my three categories, marketing, web, and graphics. 
My background in education is in marketing management and web development. So I took coding courses. I am a nerd. I can hand code websites. I can look at the code of a website and know what it's supposed to look like to the user on the front end. I'm a busy mom to three kids. My oldest uh, turned 10 earlier this month. I now have a double digits child and my youngest is in kindergarten, JK, and we have one in between. I love teaching and sharing the knowledge. Hence these free webinars I do. I also do webinars with the Brantford Resource Center. Really anyone who says, hey, can we do a webinar or a workshop? We wanna share this information. Can you do it? I usually say yes every time if it's something that is in with my realm. So right now uh, we are doing a free webinar monthly. There'll be one in March and April. I have a coming webinar with the Brantford Resource Center, which I have those links at the end of this slide. In late March, I'm gonna have a webinar with the Laurier Women's Entrepreneurship Center. And I also teach with Conestoga. So I'm teaching three courses, which is about four times a week, and they are in web development. And uh, a couple of times a month right now, I'm also teaching with the College of the Rockies, which is in Invermere, which is the community we moved from when we moved to Ontario, but they're online. So really anyone, anywhere can still take those courses. So email marketing is a cost-effective solution that gives businesses the power to reach customers in a place most people visit every day, their inbox. So what is email marketing? Let's just touch on the, the basic parts first. So according to Wikipedia, email marketing is the act of sending a commercial message to, the, to a group of people using email. In its broadest sense, every email sent to a potential or current customer could be considered email marketing. It involves using email to send advertisements, request business, or solicit sales and or donations. As we can see on the side, email marketing can be themes from direct sales, acquisition, from branding, traffic generation, customer engagement, referrals. So why use email marketing? There's still a lot of question around this. I still meet many businesses that aren't utilizing this and it's just another avenue of your marketing. That's how I refer to different things that you could use for your marketing. Social media, an avenue. Email marketing, an avenue. To get them to your site, to contact you, um, to order, uh, purchase something. So email marketing is just an avenue for you to talk to your customers, current ones, potential. So why use it? So it can help build credibility, definitely boost your sales, strengthen relationships because they're hearing from you monthly or bi-weekly. And it allows you to learn what works by using an email marketing provider because we can, we get stats, we get reports with it. We get to reach people on any device. It goes to their email. So they can view it on their laptops, on their iPads, on their mobile. It can look professional and it can make you look professional. You can get immediate results. It generates leads. You can promote your services and attract new clients. And there's many more reasons. <laughs> this is just some of them of like, why, why not use it? So there's tons of different email marketing providers. Oh, there is tons. There really is. I'm focusing on MailChimp, but as you can see, there's, there's many. And there's so many that I have never heard about before. Even for myself, when I started off with email marketing many years ago, I used your mailing list provider. So it was like ymlp.com or something. And I was with them for many years. And then, then I went to MailChimp. So I've actually been with two email marketing providers, but I've helped tons of businesses and entrepreneurs set theirs up and make templates or take a look at what they're currently using in many different providers. But other popular ones would be Constant Contact. A lot of chambers have um, Constant Contact and a lot of times their members can use it as a discount. There's Campaign Monitor. Um, Drip, there's a lot of ones that I've heard of, but not all of them I have dabbled in. But today we are going to focus on MailChimp. 
So in early January, I had launched uh, a WordPress course. And I, in that course, I include all this information of how to market your site. And so one of them was email marketing, a general one, not specifically just on MailChimp. So I had put together this poll using Mentimeter and I had put it out to some Facebook groups to see like, what are people using? Just so that I could share with the course and you today uh, so we could see. And even though it was just under 30 people had answered it, you can see that MailChimp is still a very popular one. And some of them said, oh, I have a Squarespace site so I can actually send out emails through my Squarespace site. Same with um, some Wix and stuff like that. So sometimes your platforms have the option to send them out. You usually have to upgrade. So you are still paying for that. You, know, you are usually still limited on how many you can send out. So I think with Squarespace with that client at that time, they could send out three a month. Um, where by using these other email marketing providers, you're not as limited, especially with MailChimp. But this is just a great view to see, okay, people are still using MailChimp. Not that it's going out of style, um, but there's just so many options now. So I was very curious to see where it was at. As you can see, like I tried to add in almost as many as I could. <laughs> and about four were using other. We have three for HubSpot, one for Drip, two for Constant Contact, and 16 for MailChimp. 99% of email users check their inbox every day with some checking 20 times a day. Of those people, 58% of consumers check their email first thing in the morning. So this is why email marketing is, should be utilized and where a lot of people are not utilizing it. I will connect with people where they go, I say, are you using email marketing? Oh, no, because I hate receiving those type of emails. So I'm not gonna do that for my business. We have to remember, we are not marketing to ourselves, okay? So it is another avenue. Even if you hate receiving those, doesn't mean your current clients, your potential clients, you know, future clients don't. There are people who will follow and stay really well connected to you on social media. There are people who will go to your website and do those blog posts on a regular basis. And there's people who will sign up for your email newsletter because they want to stay connected. So we all have different preferences of how we like to stay connected to businesses. And this is one of them. So even if you don't like receiving them, you don't want to be spammy. It is an avenue for you to market your business. So then I'll just chat on why MailChimp. And when it, we do compare a lot of many ones, so I, I have another presentation where I just kind of it's an overview of email marketing. And I kind of compare each of them, not each of them, but some of them. And really across the board, they're all very similar. They're all user-friendly and they have features and integrations. They have support, and tutorials, and um, they have reporting. So a lot of them are, when you check those boxes, they're extremely similar. Some have a free trial for a week or um, 14 days or a month. Um, the, the biggest difference is usually their price point, but a lot of them will have the same, um, you know, things like features reporting and some will be better than others when it comes to the reporting, some will be better than others to their features, right? But when it comes to like, do they have features? Yeah. Can they integrate with things? Yes. Do they have great support tutorials? Yes. Do they have reporting? Do they have, you know, segmenting all those kind of things? They all check those boxes. So when it comes to MailChimp, what sets it apart is they do have a forever free plan. So that is up to 2,000 emails or to send, I'm um, sorry, 2,000 subscribers or to send 12,000 emails. So you can get started with MailChimp for free. That is probably the biggest thing that sets it apart with the other platforms. So that's why a lot of people do start off with MailChimp because they're just starting the business or they haven't even done any email marketing before you don't want to you know pay for something too big too soon so let them start out with mailchimp because they do have a forever free plan i was on that forever free plan until recently uh just over the christmas break i upgraded my package because i wanted to utilize all those different integrations and features and stuff like that it is i find it very easy and user friendly it's drag and drop 
Do a lot of those other platforms have drag and drop? Yes. Um, a lot of them user-friendly? Yes. So it really will be your preference as you dabble in. Some people love MailChimp. Some people don't, just like with the other platforms. But it is easy and user-friendly, especially for people who are just starting out. There's tons of features um, and integrations, which I'm going to show you my backend of my you know, pro account and what I have it integrated with. And they have support tutorials. They have a YouTube channel. They've got all these blogs and how to's so that you can really maximize how to do it, how to set it up. What else can it be connected to? They've got tons of support. There's reporting. So I can see who opened it, who clicked, who isn't, who unsubscribed, which ones bounced back because the email address was put in wrong and so on. And they do have an iPhone app. So I will create my email newsletter on say my laptop, but then after I send it out and I schedule it and it goes out, I'll just kind of keep an eye on things on my um, iPhone app. So how do I utilize MailChimp for my business? And I think this would be very beneficial. So you can see like how, what do I have it connected to and why? So I am gonna be showing these after I talk about these. So I have it connected to my WordPress site. My site is in WordPress. So I actually have it in my footer at the bottom of the site. So the footer shows up on every page of the site and I do have a pop-up. So as after so many seconds on my website, the pop-up will appear. I also have it connected to my Facebook business page, which I will show you. And I've actually utilized all the integrations that I can with my account, which I'm going to show you. So depending on what I'm using, I can connect them. I have it linked into my link in bio for my Instagram account. I'll show you that. So I send out a monthly email newsletter. I just, <laughs> monthly is about all I can do um, when it comes to time. This is part of our marketing. And when businesses get busy, marketing goes to the back burner. Our website goes to the back burner. It happens to all of us because I got to do invoices. Invoices is what gets me paid, or I got to do the work to get paid or, you know, to ship that out where we put marketing to the back burner. It is, you know, it does generate sales. It does generate leads, but we just can't, you know, see that transaction all the time. So it is something that gets pushed to the back burner for all of us. So I've actually been sending out a monthly email newsletter consistently for a year now. And really the only reason I was able to stay up on that was that I've been having co-op students through the high school and now I have a co-op student through Laurier and I need to give them work, <laughs> especially if they're doing marketing stuff. So, oh, okay, then you can um, send out an email newsletter and then I train them on MailChimp and then I talk about why email marketing is important and that kind of thing. So I've actually been sending one out monthly for a year, aside from my summer, because I took last summer off. And that's tough to even just do that consistently with our social media, make sure our website's up to date and so on. So in my monthly email newsletter, the type of stuff I put in will be, you know, updates to the business, new team member, or we won an award, or, you know, this is what's coming up. I will put stuff in there about upcoming events, webinars, or workshops, or courses, or past. Maybe one had just passed and I can share that replay with them. Recent blog posts. Our goal is also to do a monthly blog post. So when you have a blog post, I share it out on my social media. I will put it in my email newsletter. I will use my different avenues to push out that blog post. Testimonials. So I wrap up a client, they leave a testimonial. I can feature that in my email newsletter. I can also show off completed projects or recent clients. And the list goes on. So it really depends on what's upcoming that I want to share that month because I only do it monthly and maybe what just wrapped up that maybe my email list would want to hear about. All right, so now I am going to show you some of my stuff that I had touched on. I'm just gonna pull up the chat to see if there's anything in there. Once again, if you have any questions, throw them in there as we go along. I wanna make sure you get the most out of this and. Ans uh, questions answered. In the meantime, let's take a look at my stuff. So I'm already logged in to my backend of my website, not website, my MailChimp. 
once again, I am on um, a more paid account. I'm just gonna refresh here. And I only upgraded just over the holiday break. I had been using the free version for um, quite a long time. And they're always changing it. So some of this stuff, they keep changing. Um, it used to be different layouts. So almost often I go in here, I'm like, where did that go? Or they rename it. So here is our audience. So this is my list. And um, I can take a look at the list. I can add people from here. This is the campaign. So campaigns that I've sent out because I always work off the last campaign. So I'm not redesigning it every time. You want to send it out with a consistent look and feel so that when they open that email, they go, oh, that's from so-and-so, not what is this? And we'll see businesses do that where they change the look and feel every single time. And that's only going to confuse people. So let's see if we can see my last one here. If it's going to cooperate. Here we go. So I always include this, view this in your browser. And the reason is sometimes email programs won't load all the images or you need to click, right click to load or download them. This way they can actually just click this in their email and it opens up in a browser like this. And some, like I find um, Outlook, I always have to right click to download the images where I could just click that link. But not everyone includes that. These are buttons for someone else to share, not for, them to follow me. Those are farther down. These are if they want to share. It. Here's my logo. I have this in every time and I have it clickable. Your images need to be clickable because we that's what we do in our email newsletter, especially on mobile. We will click. So make sure every image is clickable as possible. So this goes to my homepage. In this email newsletter, we featured our newest team member, Sam. So I made that clickable. I didn't have, I don't have a page on my site about him but that's where I could send it. This just goes to my homepage too. So I always have a bit of a feature. So my top area is always a bit of a feature. Um, the, the most important thing I'm, I'm sending it out for that also relates to my subject of my email. And if I did want to send them somewhere, I would have included a button in there. We have a recent blog post. So this is clickable to the blog post and this link here is clickable to the blog post. We had an upcoming webinar, which is today. This image is clickable to the where they need to register along with this. And then we had a webinar in January. It was free also. So I thought, well, we might as well include the replay just in case. So this is clickable to that page on my website where the replay is, and this is clickable. And then this is my footer area that I have consistent on every single time I send one out. So these just go to my services. These buttons down here also go to my services. And then down in here, I have the social media icons that they can connect with me so they can follow me. Now it doesn't show up in here because the way I'm viewing it, I'm in my account, but right in between here, there would be my contact info, my actual like address of my business. That there is rules with our email marketing and what has to be included in those emails. And one of them is contact info. Another one is that they need to be able to unsubscribe. It can't be hidden. It has to work. It can't be white font on a white background. So like, oh, it's there, but you can't click it. Uh, it cannot be deceiving in any way. And it needs to work. I have unsubscribed from many... Um, Email, especially last summer, I was taking a break. I realized I signed up for a lot of emails that I just don't look at anymore. So as I got those, I would unsubscribe and it, I would click it and it'd be like, page not found or it didn't work. I'm like, oh, that's sneaky. You can't, it can't, it has to work. They have to be able to unsubscribe and have it work. And so email programs like MailChimp makes sure you have all those things that we need to have in there legally, okay? So this is just what my last one looked like. So I will basically reuse this again for next month, but we'll change things out. We change with the images, we change with the content, but the concept and the layout will stay consistent. So I'm not recreating one every single time. Let's go back. Okay. 
there's tons of automations. I don't even utilize my account fully of what else it can do. Right now, I'm really just using it for the different integrations and a monthly email newsletter. Could I be utilizing it even more? Yes. So as you can see, I don't have my customer journeys set up yet with um, upgrading. So that's definitely something that um, it's on my list to utilize even more. I'm not using the website because I have my own website, but there is this area in here. There's a content studio. And a lot of this is to do with that I upgraded and paid for my account. So there's still parts of this I'm still even learning like, hmm, how can I utilize this for my business? Because for so long I was on the free account. But definitely wanna show you the integrations. And I've gone in here several times since upgrading to make sure I'm utilizing and have it connected to as much as I can. So I have it connected to my Facebook page, my Google account, Google business profile, also my QuickBooks online, which is under beta, but it will pull as I you know, sign up new clients through my invoicing, it'll connect it. Um, I don't have ad, you know, some of these things I don't have just because I'm not utilizing it, but I've gone in like, okay, what do I have that can connect? I have Stripe for when people order certain things through my website. I have WooCommerce because I have some things that are offered on my website. So there's some transaction stuff there. And then I connect it to my website this way, but I could have also connected my WordPress site this way. I don't have Eventbrite and so on. So there's lots of things I have connected it to. I think also through my Calendly. So that's my booking platform that I use for when I do free discovery calls or check-ins with clients or even through my team. I use Calendly for that. And so I can even connect MailChimp to Calendly. So it connects that way. So there's other programs that you could probably connect to from that program to MailChimp. But there's definitely lots of integrations in this to make sure you're utilizing as much as possible. So we're gonna show you my website. So I do have a pop-up, but because I go to my website all the time, the pop-up is not gonna show up because it's like, oh, you've already been here. But I have it, my email newsletter sign up in here. So this is attached to my footer. So for basically my Instagram feed and down shows up on every page of my site. This right here connects to my MailChimp account. So if you signed up right through here, you would that it would just automate automate. So I use a plugin with my WordPress site that will connect um, my MailChimp account with my WordPress account. Also through my WordPress site, um, I have forms. So one of them is, let's say, for example, my request a quote form. I'm using the plugin called WP Forms, and I'm using the pro version of that plugin. In that plugin, there's a MailChimp area where anytime someone fills this out, it could also connect to my MailChimp. So with on websites, you definitely want to have an area, something like this. And even in my request to quote form, I have, do you want to be added to my mailing list? If you have e-commerce, so with my e-commerce area on here, I can have a checkbox just like that with, as they go to check out, do you want to be added to the email list? So with WordPress, I can integrate MailChimp in multiple different ways to make sure that no matter what they fill out or order or their journey, I can hopefully capture that. So let's take a look at the Facebook page. So next is the Facebook page of how I have it connected. So right here, I have a tab that I named and created and it embeds my form through my MailChimp account. So right in here, someone can sign up. I also have it in my Instagram link in bio. So if I click this, I'm using Linktree for this link in bio function where I can send them to all different sorts of places. So one is one here is subscribe to our newsletter and it just links to here. 
And so if you have MailChimp, you actually have access to this type of form that you could send to anyone. You can include this link in your email signature. So if I go into my MailChimp again, and I go audience, and I go sign up forms, and form builder, this is where I design that form, but we'll also just grab this link. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste it. So that's just where I send them to, through my link in bio. I could also share this on my Facebook page, like actually in a post. And like I said, I could also send, add that link into my email signature, like as a button and it would go here. So this is my full form. And so I always talk about some sort of link in bio thing like link tree, because as you can see, I can send them to all different sorts of things because we don't have the option to add links into our posts on Instagram. So this is another option and actually a lot of different businesses, all different sizes and organizations use this function. So in here, it's just uh, subscribe to a newsletter and just went to that link that I can grab from MailChimp. So showing you the website, how I connect it to my MailChimp, um, Facebook, my Instagram link in bio. All right. Any questions about the MailChimp account specifically um, with the, the paid version I have that you want me to show you? Or do you have any questions on that specifically since I have it open? I've got the chat open here. Do you segment your list? That is, sometimes I do yes. So for example, um, I have some emails in there, some email addresses in there from people who took my WordPress webinar in December. So I wanted to kind of follow up with them after that regarding that um, course I was launching. And so I would segment some specific emails to them that had attended. So I really like to utilize um, the tags Let's see here. So I have it set up that if they get imported from my website, from that form, it'll say website sign up. If they get imported from my QuickBooks, that kind of thing. So I can actually see in here um, the different takes. And if I mainly import email addresses, I will add a tag. So this would be like my website contact form tag um, the WordPress webinar December 15th because I had to mainly add those in from the Zoom account um, so I take so I do utilize my takes so it allows me to see um, and multiple people one like the same person can have multiple takes so they could also be like a customer and they had to request a quote and we had a discovery call through Calendly and they paid through QuickBooks but I can see all the takes that have to do with my list um, so that that way if I do want to send certain stuff out um, like an email out to 2020 customers I can or 2020 women's expo or that kind of thing so that's how I utilize my segments um, but if we go in here I probably don't actually have segments awesome which is that web webinar but I as I import people or I have those different integrations set up I will utilize the tags so that I can go into my contacts, for example, I want to see, I'm trying to get my, the, the bar to move over, <laughs> oh, here it is. So I can see like oh, it's a QuickBooks customer. So I can see all the different tags for somebody based on how they signed up and what steps we took afterwards. So in the paid version where you can add your logo to the subscribe link form. So where did I go? Audience? <laughs> oh, come on. Audience. My sign up form. 
So you're talking like in the form builders. Let's see here. Nope, basically um, how my form looks right now it was part of the free version. This is my form and this is where I can edit it. Like this stuff isn't in there, so it doesn't show, I can just remove it. So really it's just from here up. And by asking questions, questions are really important because it will utilize, um, allow you to send what they want. So I used to work um, in tourism and, and uh, at a resort. And so part of our list would be like, you know, are you wanting more information about the wine fest or this or that? Um, so that when those scenes came up, we could actually send those people certain things that they actually checked off. Because then you have a better chance of them opening it or clicking it. That way you can hone in on sending them the content they actually want to see. And so in here, um, usually it's like a square or something and I went use image so that I could replace it with my logo. I probably could use like a square logo instead of my rectangle logo so it's not so giant, but this is the one I put in. So I did use image because when you first stop with MailChimp, that won't be in there. Okay, let's see the next question. Can you transfer email contacts from Gmail? Hmm. I know there is the, let's look at the integration here. There's the Google, there's Google Calendar, Calendar, Calendar. calendar. Um, this is the only Google ones. I'm just trying to see what it says. Connect Google to enhance tracking reporting. So I think this is more for analytics, as we can see over here. Yeah, this is for my Google Analytics account. So I can get those stats and the tracking of like, okay, someone clicked, did it get to the site and so on. Now grabbing um, your contacts from your Google account, that's where we get a little tricky because we really wanna send emails to people who are implied consent, there's wording with it, um, or express consent. So there are rules of how and when can we add people to our list. If they're a recent client, we can add them to our list but we really want them to then go into the preferences and actually say yes. So there's, it's quite complicated that they have made it with our guidelines and rules. Um, like we have to have our mailing address in there. We have to allow them to unsubscribe and so on. Yeah, you could export from Gmail and import it, but then are all those people wanting your email list, right? Or maybe, could send out an email just like, hey, we're updating our system. We now have MailChimp. If you want to continue to receive them, please click this link to confirm you want to receive them, right? So they're, that way, if they end up saying yes, they've implied. They have um, given you consent. Okay, I think I answered the question. All right, we're almost all done my little parts here. And keep putting the questions in. There's definitely some things I just wanna pull up before we wrap up. So we are doing a free webinar for March and April. So if you have something that you would love an hour on, throw it in there. It is only an hour, but if you have um, other ideas that you would like to see a webinar on, please let me know. I'm open to suggestions and ideas. We come with some ideas, but it's always nice to know of what um, others might be wanting to learn. So the MailChimp topic came out of our last webinar when someone suggested it. I'm like, yes, that is great. But there is only so much information we can squeeze into the time. So put in the chat if you have any suggestions on what um, March and April's free webinars could be about. So there are some upcoming stuff. Um, so Wednesday, March 2nd, I have like a two hour 
course that I'm doing with College of the Rockies. It is in BC, but it's online. So anyone can take it and it's $59 plus GST because it's in British Columbia. And it is not recorded, it is scheduled. So for me, when I teach it, it's from 12 to two. Um, for those on the in Pacific time, it's 10 to noon. But I always like to share what's upcoming because you just never know. So that one's a two hour, everything Instagram that we can squeeze in. Then we have an upcoming um, Thursday, March 10th, I'm doing a free webinar through the Brantford Resource Center. We're gonna be talking about Google ads versus Facebook ads because people think, oh, I need to do ads for my business. I need to get it out there. But those are two different, very, very different things, different reasons and different parts of the marketing triangle or the customer journey that you would utilize these. So there's a free webinar on that coming up on Thursday, March 10th of talking about the Google ads versus Facebook ads, when to use it. And I was also just recently on a podcast as a guest where we talked about Google ads versus social media ads. So um, if you want to learn more about what is the difference and when do I use these, because uh, like for an example, if you're wanting to um, use ads for awareness, you do, you're still getting the business name out there, you need to get it out there and um, spread the word about it. Google ads is not for awareness. So there is definitely a difference between the two. You will get the presentation slides and these links will all be clickable in there. Okay, so let's pull up the chat and just see if there was anything else. Oh, SEO would be a good one. I do have one that I've done in the past to the BRC. So that's one I've already got ready to go. <laughs> also in late March, there will be also um, a webinar through the Laura Gate Women's Entrepreneurship Center, which will be Google, Google My Business. Um, I, we just don't have the link for that quite yet. I haven't specifically used the MailChimp web builder myself. Um, but I know like, you can use the landing pages and the lead magnets and stuff like that. I could definitely see if there's any um, how-tos on that because I'm sure MailChimp has either some tutorials or some YouTube videos on those web builders and really what to utilize those for. So I'm just gonna make a note of the web builder. Cause we always hear people talking about like, I need to just make a, a lead magnet page. They have an ebook or they've got a course. Um, and that's where those pages can come in handy for through our email list. I just seeing if there's any other questions. All right. So my part of my presentation is done. I hope you learned something. Um, I guess there's only so much time we can, information I could squeeze in when it comes to MailChimp. But as you can see, if you do have a free account, you can see what my account looked like in the back that I have now access to way more integration and features and reporting and the builder and the segments that now I've just opened up a floodgate of now things I need to see if I want to utilize them, the automations that could really be utilizing. So I'm even just, I'm just utilizing a portion of what MailChimp allows me to do now that I've upgraded my list. But I had a lot of those integrations in place before I upgraded. So my WordPress site, um, I, I want to say even possibly um, Zoom, but I could be incorrect, but definitely my Calendly, my forms. The more that you can funnel in there as people contact you, the more that you're building your list for when you are ready to send something out. So let me know if you have any other questions. I will be here right till 12. You can unmute if you want to chat and have a question. Um, if you have topic ideas for March and April. I'd love to hear them so far. SEO is a good one. Um, yeah, I'll be here for the next 10 minutes. So if you have any more questions, anything else I can show you, anything. You will receive uh, an email, hopefully the tonight or tomorrow, that will have the link, you know, thanks for attending kind of thing. And it will have the link to the webinar replay and the presentation slides. And I will include these links for the upcoming um, courses and workshops too. Aha, uh -huh. sure, I can even just show you. Um, so create an email. So when I go to create an email now, let me close my stuff. 
I go into my campaigns. Like I said, I reuse the last one that I made. That way I'm not having to redo that look and feel every time. So when we go to make our March newsletter, we'll come in here and we would go replicate because I've already got that part set up. So I'd actually just go replicate. That's a bit different if you aren't set up yet on MailChimp. I would change this because this is just internal. Um, depending on if it's going to everyone or not, I do have it that's personalized in that email field to the app, um, first name. Who is it coming from? So it could be Sam from Clarity or however you want to say. It could be even the business name. My subject, I would change that preview text from the last time. And then I would go into here and edit my design. And I would just replace. So I'd, I would create a new image in Canva and I would upload it to here. So I could click and I would go replace and I would just make sure I update that link. So Shave is going to something specific and not just to my homepage. I would update the, my header title, the write up for it. If I need to put in a button, I would put one in there if that actually has some sort of call to action. But for this, this was just like an announcement type um, post in there. If you had a new blog post, I would transfer, um, change out the image and definitely update the link. Always update your links. And here's where I would update that content for that blog post. And if there's certain things I don't need, I can actually just delete. I'm like, oh, I don't need this divider. I don't need this whole section anymore. I could delete it. Can also add new things in. So let's see here. And here's all my different blocks that I can add in. So I can connect it to products on my site. I can put my YouTube videos in there. If I wanted to showcase some portfolio stuff, I could have, you know, four groups of logos or whatever it is I want to show. The dividers are where I, how I break up my sections. So these are all the different things I can add in. And this is where I do the button. So I would just go in and remove what I don't need or replace with what is upcoming. And then there's my footer. And I try to make it to go with my branding as much as possible. So even though, yes, it's MailChimp, people are going to be able to tell it's MailChimp. I've tried to customize it as much so it doesn't scream MailChimp or that I just created an account. I haven't customized it at all. So it's really drag and drop, super easy to change out. If you can use email or you use Word or anything like that, as you can see, it's very similar. And I work with both sides of the screen. I'm just going to see, I wanted to show another part. So I'm just going to continue. I'll have to delete that one later. <laughs> and I'm going to go finish later. There we go. The other part is the reporting. It's a huge part of any email marketing platform. We've all seen the businesses that will send out their mass emails through their actual just email account. They'll BCC everybody. And sometimes it's content in there or sometimes they've just uploaded this massive image. That is a huge no-no. Because A, does those emails include your address and your contact info as per the legal laws we have to? No. Does it include any unsubscribe link so that if I don't want to see those anymore, I can unsubscribe? No. So that is not even abiding by the laws around our emails. And you're just blind copying everyone. So how do you know how many people opened it? Who clicked? Who did it go to their spam? So with our email marketing platforms like MailChimp, we can get some reports. So let's look at my report from the February email newsletter. 
This allows you to see what's working and what doesn't, which is part of our marketing. We want reports. We want stats. Because if something did really well, well, why? This one did really well. Well, why? So we can see how many people I sent it to, when I can even download this, if I need to share it with somebody, how many opened it, how many clicked, how many bounced, how many unsubscribed, um, successful deliveries, all this kind of stuff. It even gives me a bit of reports. So mine aren't sk skimmability. So I need to like, okay, how do I do that? <laughs> Um, we get clicks. So I had links throughout, but the thing is, as you get to the bottom, those links will get clicked less and less. So the most clicks um, are usually closer to the top. So this one that got the most clicks were the um, Zoom registration. I don't know if you can see them anymore. The sunshine has decided to come out. So I like to see at least how many opened, how many clicked at minimum, but there is so much more. And so I can actually review these stats from my phone um, so that I don't have to keep logging in. But even if I hover, so 46.1% opened, which is actually pretty good. Um, and two point, it was a, even though it's only 10 clicks, it's 2.47% clicks. So MailChimp has a list, which I brought up in one of my previous, um, I think last months, so I think now chimp benchmarks. That gives you an idea like, okay, how is mine doing? It's just a benchmark. So if I even just do find, so I can do marketing here. Okay, so marketing and advertising, let's say that's as close you know, to my business as possible. The average benchmark for that is 17.38 for open where I had 46. And 2.04% of, oh, no, that's open, sorry. That's open, that's clicked. Um, so 2.04 for clicked where I had, where am I here? 2.4, right? So that helps you see um, when it comes to the benchmarks, the average of how it's doing. So there's a list here, so we have, Average open rate, average click rate, a bounce, a soft bounce, and unsubscribe. So even if you only really take a good peek at these two, you can see. So for example, last time I think we looked up real estate. So these are their benchmarks for average open and average click. So some of my opens do really well that they're above the benchmark and sometimes they're not. So then, okay, why did that one do really well and why did that one not so that we could send more information out that people are really liking all right well that pretty much wraps us up now <laughs> and i can include the benchmark link um in that email yeah the benchmarks are great in the sense of that's the question like how do i know if this is a good open rate like, what does this mean? Am I doing really good or am I not? So like I said, some of mine have done pretty good when it comes to the benchmarks and sometimes not so much. I think what, mine was 20 something. So most of them are usually above the benchmarks, but my clicks aren't always there. I don't get a high amount of clicks. So that's something that we could focus on more and really dive into more of why. Why are we not getting a lot of clicks? Maybe they're also following us on social media and they'll sign up through the Zoom thing that way, right? There's lots of different answers. But I really hope this was helpful and that you have taken away something. Um, and like I said, I'm here to help. So if you ever want to dive in, have a marketing consultation of like diving into this more or helping setting up, I can help with that too. But thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to me. And like I said, the goal is, is that you took away something you learned something today. Have a great day. I'll end the meeting right at 12. Oh, sorry, one. <laughs> I don't know what time it is.